everybody. Welcome back. Uh, today we are going to be looking at the Gilded Age and um, what exactly is the Gilded Age? It is, uh, well according to Wikipedia, it's uh, a period of time in the United States history in the late 19th century uh, from roughly 1870 to 1900 and um, this term Gilded Age was pop popularized by uh, by Mark Twain and uh, I'll just click on this here and um, yeah so uh, so this period roughly from the 1870s to the 1900 and the term uh, was derived from Mark Twain's 1873 novel The Gilded Age A Tale of Today um, which basically just talks about serious social problems masked by a thin gold gilding. Um, the Gilded Age was an era of rapid economic growth and um, you basically had the rise of these uh, the robber barons and it was just a, a derogatory term for uh, unscrupulous, unscrupulous businessmen and um, you know you got the uh, John Astor, William A. Clark, uh, a lot of prominent people but you saw the rise of extremely wealthy people like Rockefeller, Vanderbilt, uh, Morgans, of course the Astors, uh, this William A. Clark. So in essence the Gilded Age, the part I want to be looking at today is with regards to uh, mansions and what happened is all of these newly minted millionaires uh, back in those days they the story goes that they all decided to go crazy and start building mansions and they loaded those mansions with um, they loaded them with like fine art and they they basically for social status they wanted to mimic what was going on in Europe so they designed all their mansions like to mimic mansions you would see over in Europe with a different style French Baroque and Gothic and neoclassical all these styles you find in Europe so that's the story and how I kind of got tuned into all this is that about a month ago I did uh, a mud flood video looking at Fifth Avenue mansions and it turns out there's this thing called Millionaire's Row in, in on Fifth Avenue and a lot of mansions a lot of these mud flood mansions were on Fifth Avenue and when I was looking at uh, photos for these um, you know these free energy fireplaces a lot of them came from these mansions you know you have your two devices you got your plate and you got see this is how you know this wasn't designed to be a, these are just token logs would you put a paint would you put a painting right in front of a fireplace you know the flames the heat's just gonna waft right over this and just destroy I'm sure it's great for paint, right? Um, but I was looking at a lot of these fireplaces and they were all from this period that were told, uh, this is all from the United States, uh, were told that these fireplaces were from an era called the Gilded Age or the Gilded Era. So I was, you know, I, I think I had heard that term but I didn't really uh, know exactly what it meant. So this is a uh, library of J.P. Morgan. So yeah, you, you want a fireplace by that burns wood by all these books, right? But so as I was looking into that, that led me to look up what this Gilded Age was. And as soon as it talked about this period of time with all these rich people building mansions, that's when I knew that something was up 
So let's let's go on a journey here. Let's take a look at some of these mansions. So Andrew Carnegie, Andrew Carnegie, right? World famous. He builds a huge mansion, and uh, it's not really noticeable in this photo. But when you um, let's close that out. When you go over and take a look at uh, the black and white photo here, what you're going to see, this is the entrance. The entrance is going to this floor. There's a floor below the entrance. So see this wrap around here? There's a window right behind here. So there, this whole floor is below the entrance and these stairs go down they come down and around here to, to the this well probably what was ground level and it might even be lower than that but i'm pointing this out because this is a mud flood mansion we didn't build this so sure enough if you try and look up uh schematic uh, actual photos of the construction keep in mind this is from 1903 you cannot find construction photos of this building and um there's literally a museum now in this mansion so you would think they have the you know they have the photos of the construction of this thing but, you know, we're going down the timeline. This is on their cooperhewitt.org timeline. And, uh, okay, 1898. It says that um, they purchase a plot of land and they're showing you where it is. So, okay, things are looking good. 1901. The Carnegie Mansion is designed. Okay. Okay, cool. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, it's already complete it's our it's completed what 1901 the garden design to 1902 it's completed <laughs> oh gee so yeah the, just get used to that pattern for the rest of this video but what's interesting to me too about this mansion is there's this awesome um, blog. It's called Dayton in Manhattan .blogspot .com. and you can search by keywords, which uh, comes in real handy. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, please check it out. But they got a write up of this mansion, and they're talking about um, there's somebody who would. Uh, there was somebody, a composer and a musician, he would come to the mansion every day and exactly at 7 a.m. he began playing music uh, on, on an organ. So what I'm finding is a lot of these mansions, they have these organs, um, you know, incorporated into them, which makes me really wonder, you know, what's going on because... Uh, a lot of churches obviously have organs and they have those portholes and you know I can't tell if there are portholes in this building but just it's something just something of interest um, yeah so basically oh yeah it was a, a wonder of up-to-date technology and uh, uh, purified water it's nice steam heat so all of these mansions which are mud flood they're always like you know high tech right compared to the rest of what was going on at that time so let's let's move on let's close some tabs here uh, let's take a look at this John Jacob Astor mansion this is millionaires row Fifth Avenue and uh, hopefully you can kind of tell what's going on here. You got you got your mud flood building, and um, and again, um, what was also going on at this time is all of these millionaires were 
they were just loading up on paintings and uh, in a future video I think there's a deception going on with uh, Renaissance art paint paintings as well but for another video and again like you got the two devices and would you put a painting again like this is how you know it's not there might be some logs in there but <laughs> you're gonna like have a full-on fire with a painting right above and all around like priceless stuff supposedly but you can see the architecture is just it's on it's out of this world right and um, as we scroll down I mean this is what it's like in all these mansions and you got your two devices uh, we got to put another painting up there a couple devices some token logs and I think they there's probably a clock here they love putting clocks on on their uh, uh, above their fireplaces but um, yeah so this is just another example of a mud flood building and we're told this aster built it and uh, this one gets demolished as uh, the Carnegie Mansion by the way is still in existence it doesn't get demolished uh, but this one gets demolished in like 1820 oh sorry 1924 26 uh, right around <clears throat> right around 1824 25 or 26 uh, gets replaced by this building let's move on okay so Clark's folly so one of these robber barons William a Clark so uh, he was a senator and uh, apparently made his money with copper he decides this is a good one too he decides to build an equivalent of today what would be a 200 million dollar mansion and um, again you're gonna notice the, the weird windows they're like that work's been done on this bottom level and you got these entrances going down uh, and this building's got the portholes right and what's what's really wild about this I think there was a clock in here but you got your plate back here they took the two devices out um, okay so the house was it took 14 years to construct this house roughly 200 million inflated dollars uh, today's cost so um, 121 rooms again they love loading this stuff with collectibles right collectible paintings and um, oh this this one's got these two of these devices in it okay so it they started construction in 1901 construction finished in 1913 I think it was and it was demolished in 1927 so it stood for roughly 27 years and they they spent 200 million they spent 200 million on it roughly <laughs> um yeah see that just doesn't sound right does it um the demolition of the William May Clark that was loud sorry about that uh William A. Clark house Fifth Avenue yeah just 16 years after its completion in 1911 it was demolished it took 13 years to complete and 16 years later you demolish it this is how you know that there's a cover-up of history going on not only is it a mud flutter but then that whole story that doesn't even make sense and what I also wanted to mention is this building with the portholes an organ loft housed the largest chamber organ in America um, yeah it was oh look at this high-tech for its times electricity central air it had a private subway line 121 rooms third at least they got bathrooms in this one but check this out this organ uh, this you know I'm, I'm still looking into this but this is uh, there's something with these uh, these structures and these organs but the oh and the organ was apparently torn apart and dumped into a swamp in Queens 
Like, why do they always do this kind of stuff? Like, giant bones and organs. Um, yeah, so, oh, look at this, too. It was sold to this gentleman uh, in 1925 for the equivalent of today of $40 million. So, so he spent $200 million, sold it for 40 and got rid of it 16 years after it was completed. So... You know, and it was replaced by this. <laughs> so you could just see that the Gilded Age, this is the part of the Gilded Age where you have these newly minted millionaires just building crazy mansions, that is a cover story. Because you have to explain why do you have all these crazy architectures like these buildings that look like things in Europe, but United States is supposed to be relatively new. So how do you explain it? Well, you need you need the the whole myth of these these new elite, right, to account for these mansions um, because you know you can't burn everything. Like obviously all the great fires, but for whatever reason they left some mansions lying around. Um, Cornelius Vanderbilt. Uh, look at this. The windows buried in the ground. Stairs going up. We're told he built this. He did not build this. There's a fireplace with this metallic plate. and They took away the two devices. Um, oh, this is good. Uh, because Vanderbilt wanted his home to be finished as quickly as possible, uh, he gave the uh, builder 18 months to complete it. 600 workmen working around the clock. Thousands of people watch the construction for a year and a half and there's no construction photos of this. Thousands of people. A multi-millionaire. Oh, and by the way, the this, this mansion too, this mansion that was torn down after 16 years, and it costs 200 million. There's no photos of this being constructed. The Carnegie Mansion, the first one we looked at, no photos of it being constructed. The Vanderbilt one, this Vanderbilt one, no photos of it being constructed. Mud flood, the previous two, mud flood. And the, um, this one gets demolished here. Uh, 19, yeah, 1926, this one gets demolished. <sighs> By the way, this is Cornelius Vanderbilt II. You, hopefully you guys recognize that hand gesture, the hidden hand. Um, but he's supposedly the guy who built this. So I think these elites, they, I don't think like they just randomly became, you know, the head of copper magnet, you know, banking magnet, um, uh, whatever else, uh, railroad magnet, oil magnate. Um, I think they're placed in those positions and it has something to do uh, you probably had to belong to some kind of bloodline or fraternity to to be appointed I believe it's all appointed so just let's take a look at a few more um, another mansion on Millionaire Avenue Fifth Avenue or Millionaire Row Fifth Avenue you got uh, of course here we go in the ground stairs going up mud flutter uh, another millionaire supposedly in 1889 supposedly built this and um, again two devices in the fireplace metal background so they got the free energy fireplaces and they look like the things palaces and mansions sorry mansions you'd find in Europe and um, just scrolling down here but yeah this is this was the Vanderbilt Mansion mentioned in the last uh, the last tab there, but uh, um, yeah, this one this mansion gets destroyed in uh, 27, 1927. Moving on, uh, George Eret Mansion. You can tell windows here, stairs going up to this level, and. Um, he, oh, this guy was a member of several leading German societies. I don't know, I just highlighted that. 
uh, this building gets replaced by this. Uh, in what had become a tradition in New York, the neighborhood of elegant homes. Uh, this one was leveled after only 50 years. Well, not surprising. Moving on. Uh, the Lost. They always like to say that. The Lost uh, Mansions. Uh, A.T. Stewart Mansion, Fifth Avenue again. Uh, you got windows below here. Stairs moving up here. Um, completed in 1855, so I wouldn't expect any construction photos. But Oh, the previous two, by the way. Um, again... This mansion, I looked, there's no construction photos. And uh, this one, there's no construction photos. And um, here we go with this one. And again, they all have these rooms where they just collect all this art. And I think there's a purpose behind that. And it's not just because they like to collect art. But I'll go into that in another video. Um, yeah, so just more of the same. Demolition in 1901, and it got replaced by that. And uh, let's see, just a couple more here, guys. Um, Lost Jacob Rupert Mansion, uh, stairs going up, and you got your little windows below ground. And uh, construction began. And it was completed in 1883, and I believe this is this is it over here. I wish I could see a close-up of these like houses. They all look like they're they all look like they're below the ground level. But I can't get another photo of this. I mean, but you look in here. You got your devices here for the fireplace. I mean, it was just all these places. They needed an excuse to uh, to account for all these mansions, like, and the Gilded Age is a perfect cover because America was definitely uh, becoming industrialized, and you had like um, uh, factories and all these kinds of things. So it it was happening, but tucked into it, there's this this whole lie about these mansions and the elite um so was there anything else okay yeah just here you can see it's a mud flutter and uh it was uh this one was um i believe the structure itself was torn down in 1925 1925 so a lot of these are torn down between 1920 and 1930 um, and we'll just look at uh, one more from New York here the lost Mary Mason Jones mansion and I think there's a better well it's pretty impressive again with all the art yeah here you go see there's there's this whole there's windows windows stairs going up to this level um there's all these are all windows going down and portholes all these portholes i wonder if this place has an organ hmm. but you know you guys get the picture and it got replaced by this so what i also wanted to look at is it's not just in new york where these mansions are they're all over the place. Uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, there's this James J. Hill house, and it's completed in 1891, so right in that Gilded Age era. And, um, of course, um, inside, this, inside this house, you got one of these crazy organs. So, I mean, it's very interesting. Um, not sure what to make of it right now, but and uh, this is just uh, the exterior of the house, and you got stairs going up, and you have this the ground levels a little bit shaky. You've got windows, you know, trailing into the ground, and 
um, but it's uh, it's just this how it this is a mansion basically in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, and it's just you, this one's actually still around, and you can take tours in this in this one. Yeah, so that's pretty impressive. But um, let's see here. Let let me close some tabs here. Little too much going on. I can't even. Oh, that guy. Okay. 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 Closing out. Closing out. Okay. Oh, okay, so, um, Chicago, in Chicago, they had their own version of Millionaire's Row, uh, Fifth Avenue. They had something called Prairie Avenue, and uh, one of the mansions in Prairie Avenue was Marshall Field Mansion. Uh, this is the same Marshall Fields um, that has the... Uh, department store in the United States and there were a bunch of millionaires who were all living on this this Prairie Avenue and I'm just highlighting this particular mansion because it's a mud flutter you got all the windows here this is ground level and you got stairs going up to this level here uh, the home was torn down in 1955 here's a better shot um, uh, it's to be raised, which is demolished basically as an economy measure. The man, oh, look, and of course, the mansion was the first Chicago home to have electric lighting, uh, and the public were barred from the structure. That's nice. So, it's it's in Chicago too. Like it's all over. Um, it's not just it's not just New York. Uh, New York is a a, a pocket of a lot of these structures but they exist in Chicago all the big cities and uh, even Detroit um, now these don't look I mean the windows are a little suspect but you know even without looking at that you've got these crazy mansion this is in Detroit and both of these are destroyed uh, in like between 1900 and 1910 and uh, the Boeing house here this is the same uh, the uh, the Boeing aerospace guy <laughs> I think it's like the second biggest defense contractor in the world he was born in this place and they still tore it down you know and like I mean just look at the architecture so I guess what I'm saying, just to summarize it all, is that this whole gilded era or gilded age is a cover story. As far as the elite, this newly minted group of millionaires going crazy and building mansions everywhere and like making them look like European style mansions and that is just a total lie and cover story to account for why they have all these mansions that's all it is and I just wanted to add one more thing here um, in the 19, 1850s Toronto there were some photographs taken and I know other people have taken showed um, how I, that desolate the cities were in the 1850s like I think uh, London, I've seen you know presentations of how there was no one walking around in the cities in the 1850s. I think London, someone did for one from Russia, uh, but this is going to be the Toronto edition. And I just wanted to show you these pictures were found, and we actually have two people here and a person here, but it's it's just mud mud streets, nice architecture, hardly anyone here. Not a lot going on. You don't see any tons of buildings, but there's supposed to be roughly 300,000 people in Toronto at that time, or at this time, or sorry, yeah, at that time. But uh, it was a lot smaller as well. So, like, look at just absolutely barren, devoid of life. <laughs> it is kind of eerie, isn't it? 
not a lot of people. And uh, here's just some rooftops, but there we go. There's a couple people here in like a horse and buggy, but just like, it just like, it goes on and there's just almost nobody on the streets. Again, and what's interesting about these intersections is like, they have planks laid down so that people can actually cross the road because <laughs> it's all just dirt. But, you know, tons of structures, very little people. It's almost like, you know, they were dug out again, another thoroughfare here, nobody. And um, I think I see like a buggy and just a lot of emptiness, no people. And again here, like nice structures, like who's building all this stuff? And you got these walkways and just a bunch of dirt. <laughs> this is pretty interesting when you look back at it. Again, dirt, the walkway up here. And there's very, I don't, I can't see anybody. I'm not sure if that's a person there, but very few people, tons of buildings. Um, nothing. Uh, nobody. Another walkway. That might be a card or something, but there's no people. And someone's constructing, reconstructing this church, but I don't know, that might be a person down there, I'm not sure. But like, not many people. This is virtually a gang <laughs> back at this time. I mean, that's as many people as you're going to see. Like that is, I'm surprised there's that many actually. So, I just wanted to throw in the, the Toronto version of this. You know, ice, desolate cities, basically Toronto style. So, I think I'll just uh, leave it here, but um, I'll leave some links in the description. And yeah, so everything's pretty much a lie, guys. And I'm on board with this short time frame. I. Uh, you know, starting from 1850s, it seems like we started, I don't know how people got reintroduced to the cities, but it seems like that's kind of <laughs> when it started. And, and all of these mansions that I, we were talking about today, those are all, in my opinion, based on mud flood evidence, based on there's no photos of the construction, based on they look. They have uh, these free energy fireplaces in them, and they look like the old civilizations in Europe. Um, I think we didn't build any of them. There was one big civilization. There was a cataclysm. Some of these buildings survived. They burned tons of them down, but they left some, so they had to explain it. They had to explain the ones in the United States. So because the United States is supposed to be a lot newer and you can't have these really old buildings, right? Or mansions or whatever. So, you know, thus comes the Gilded Age story and it's a great story. And I think Mark Twain, I don't think it's, a, it's an accident that uh, Mark Twain has a, uh, a book about it, you know? Yeah, Mark Twain's novel. I, I have a feeling he's one of these uh, culture creation guys, so. Okay, I've talked enough, so I will, uh, I'll leave it here, but uh, thanks for watching, and uh, until next time, bye.